This season of Undercover Coaches was inspired by a flight attendant I met who used her listening skills as a way to connect, calm, and create an extraordinary experience for the passengers and crew. And our interaction made me realize that I've met a lot of people who aren't expert listeners or trained coaches, but who use empathy and curiosity and generosity to connect and create space for other people to step into possibility. I like to call them undercover coaches. People in my audience were saying, yeah, your guests are amazing, but I don't have these coaching or leadership skills. I can't do that work because I don't know how to. What if I get it wrong? What if I make a mistake? Well, I feel exactly the same way every goddamn day. And I'm calling bullshit on both of us. If I've learned anything these past few years, it's that no one's coming to save us. The curtain has been pulled back and it's clear that it's up to each one of us to show up and put in the work to make the change we wanna see in the world. Sometimes that work is as simple as a conversation. In this season, I interview people, including that flight attendant, who show up intuitively using these skills. My hope is that I learn how to use these tools more fluently, not just as a coach, but in my everyday life and interactions. I'm hoping you find them useful as well. Join me. Let's live through this together. I met Renee Wagner on a flight from San Francisco to Boston. I fly Alaska Air almost exclusively. I promise they're not paying me for that, but it's true. And I fly that route several times a year. I love that airline and my travel is always easy. I have to say, I know that's probably not true for everybody, but it has been for me. This trip, however, was downright delightful. As a flight attendant on our flight, Renee was a beacon of light and humor. She made all the announcements for the flight and each one was funny, kind, and gracious. She eased the collective soul on the flight. I, I don't know a better way to say that. She captured our attention. She used humor and she made us feel, yeah, safe, <laughs> our job, but also seen. So naturally I had to talk to her and no surprise, we hit it off immediately. And she's the whole reason I'm doing season three. I just loved everything about her. It turns out she's an undercover coach, which was really exciting for me. <laughs> well, let me, explain me. It. <laughs> let me explain that a little bit more. So Renee went to flight school to become a pilot, but she decided that people were more her passion than flying the instruments of a plane. So she embarked on a path of working with people. She's been a flight attendant for 22 years with Alaska Airlines and 26 years in the airline customer service business. For five years during that time, she also had her own business as a fertility coach after navigating her own infertility. Loving adventure and people, she spends her time really as, in her words, an undercover coach, sitting with fellow flight crews and passengers and asking them questions to help them move forward just a little bit. Her coaching skills are just a part of her life, whether she is in the skies or helping out her community volunteering. She is living, in her own words, her own fertilicious life. Welcome, Renee. I'm so excited to have you on How oh, I Live Through This. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really honored to even be asked to be a guest <laughs> of this podcast. So I'm super excited to be here. It just seems to me and this is something that you and I were talking about on the flight. Yeah. Uh, it seems to me that using coaching skills in everyday situations can help build connections, not bridges. And you did that really beautifully on our flight. So I guess the first question I have for you is, tell me more about your experience as an undercover coach. Okay, so we, you and I actually came up with that word. <laughs> I think while, you said while, it. <laughs> well, we were flying and uh, because of our conversation and we were talking about like, how do I, like basically who I am and how do I end up being this coaching like on the aircraft and, you know, I'm 
first of all, I'm not charging anybody <laughs> while I'm working. <laughs> it's just really asking people questions, right? Because that's a good coach, coach that asks questions and then helps people be seen and heard and have them be feel safe. So I guess what, I guess it's kind of a question like, who am I and what do I do? I think that's really the question. And so a little, so I guess just being a flight attendant, how I go about being a flight attendant is I know that my energy sets the tone for the aircraft, especially if I'm in the front of the aircraft, uh, greeting people coming on. So I want people to feel like this is going to be a fun flight and there's not going to be any stress. So as I greet them, I'm greeting them with a lot of energy. By the way, I'm really energetic. <laughs> tell and uh, really adventurous and I really love people. So I really just love greeting people and seeing them for who they are. So for example, if you see somebody come on with their bright uh, pink mohawk, they're, they're, they're displaying themselves because they want to be seen and noticed, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I notice them. Like, hey, look at you with that <laughs> badass hair. What are you doing today? Oh, my gosh. Look at you sporting that outfit. And then the guy right behind him in the T-shirt and shorts, I go, look at you dressing up today. You too. <laughs> I just love seeing you dress up today too. So you just just notice people. I, I don't know if I'm answering a question or not, but just kind of telling you what I do. And... So the undercover coaching then is as I'm greeting people, I see people and I ask them, business, pleasure, what you doing? Where are you going? Are you going to have fun? Oh, this is a sad trip. You, you know, so then I change my tone immediately. Okay. You're going for a funeral. Uh, that's heavy stuff. So then I can go check on them later mm. and see how are you really doing? Are you really owning what's happening for you right now or are you just kind of walking in your own fog right now so i just am able to meet them where they're at i'm a neutral party who just sees them and even just that little moment i know helps people mm. so I, yeah Got any questions about that? <laughs> well, that's what we were talking about is how you show up, how we all show up. How do you show up to your everyday, your work, your, you know, wherever it is you are. And what I'm hearing you say is that that makes a huge difference. How you show up in your job makes a huge difference, but how you show up to each person on that flight makes a difference for them yes. too. Yes. Yeah. And just, it, I just, uh, I do it without thinking, really. I just notice people. I notice their happiness, their excitement, their pain, a little itsy bitsy teeny weeny bit of their story. You know, they're going to see grandma and grandpa, the little kids. I love the kids. And I also, I mean, really, I love all people, but like, the older couple that's been married for 62 years, you know, I just, you know, say, hey, you know, you guys should probably go on a date tonight. You guys look really good together. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just playing with them and just having fun mm. with just little comments of like, you guys, we know you're in love, but you should probably go on a first date. <laughs> <laughs> Again. <laughs> how, how, like, how did that start? How did you, when you started as a flight attendant, did you know that immediately? Were you able to, to recognize that how you were showing up was impacting people's experience? I think I must have known it, you know, because you get feedback, you know, like, oh, you were really great. You have a great personality. I, I get that kind of feedback every flight. 
So the more that happens, the more I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to keep on doing this. This is, a, this is pretty easy. <laughs> this is pretty easy to be me, <laughs> to, mm. to be interested in people for just a second right. and just have a little bit of engagement with them and be genuinely curious about who they are and what their story is. I can't imagine, I was really struck as you were saying that, because I can't imagine there are a ton of uh, flight attendants these days saying that that their job is easy or that they're having a lot of fun. I mean... <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> um, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. There are um, not a lot of my coworkers who feel the same way as I do. I think a lot of, well, I think COVID kind of didn't help either. Yeah. People have kind of lost sense on how to make a connection mm. with, with anybody. But even before COVID and I think even before my 22 years of flying, I was outgoing and extroverted and friendly to people walking down the street. I have a smile that invokes a return smile back. I'm really approachable, basically. I have a smile. I have a, an air about me that means that you can ask, you can walk up to me and ask me anything in uniform, out of uniform, in a different country. Yeah. <laughs> People come up to me and ask me for directions. That's so awesome. And also, maybe overwhelming to people who don't know how to connect with other people. You know, that feeling of like, well, if I'm not that way to begin with, there's no hope for me <laughs> or it's not possible. How do you, how would you respond to that? Not everybody is alike. Correct. We each have our own unique gifts and talents and skill set and maybe attracting other people to yourself is not something you even want. And that's okay mm -hmm. too. That that's, it's not for everybody. That is for sure. And a smile, a simple smile across a room can also mean something to somebody as well. All I can do is be the best version of myself. And I'm just really lucky that being a flight attendant allows me to do that. Mm. So I look at it from the standpoint of I'm just going to keep being the best version of myself, my most authentic self. And I'm able to do that on an airplane. And that is a gift to everybody on that aircraft, my crewmates, the passengers, everybody that comes in contact with that plane, I'm just going to just keep being myself. And it's contagious. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> and I even tell people, watch out, I'm contagious. <laughs> My smile might infect you. You might smile back. <laughs> watch out. Uh, so if only for a moment, that, that in itself is a gift. So I I guess I think about it like that. Like I'm, I'm not expecting others to be like me. I don't think that's how it is, but if they're, if I, if my contagious energy <laughs> is caught on for just a moment, that's a good thing. Yeah. And it makes me realize that, um, okay. So I'm thinking about yes to all of that. And it, traveling can be a shit show. Like people get on and they're <laughs> and they're assholes. They don't mean to be. Maybe I try to give everyone the benefit of the doubt. And none of us were born assholes, for the most part. But you know, like they're tired. They're you know stressed. All kinds of things. They bring that on as well as all their luggage. And I, I mean, it doesn't surprise me that at all that people in the travel industry are exhausted, are overwhelmed, mm -hmm. you know, with the shortage of, of, um, workers. Or, yeah. I mean like everything. So everything's impacted and, and in the customer service business, you're going to hear about it. Mm -hmm. So how do you 
maintain that smile, that energy, that infectious, beautiful spirit when people are when all the negativity is hitting me in yeah. the face. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. literally, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hope, hope, no, I have not gotten hit in the face. <laughs> Back in my customer service uh, agent days, I did get spit on. So that was not. Come fun. on. Did you really? Yeah. People. Yeah. Yeah. When people are, are out of control, when they feel out of control, that they don't have another way of expressing it other than shouting yelling spitting screaming yeah wow. so that happens and i mean you've seen the yeah the airline <laughs> reality videos yeah. of people freaking out it's it's a control thing right i can't have what i want so i'm gonna scream and throw a tantrum and think that you know they're not thinking they're just reacting yeah so in my mind, I'm uh, so when the negativity comes, and it does, I know on an intuitive level that this is their crap, this is their stuff, um, and I can very quickly either decide like, okay, am I first of all, is this a safe situation for them, me in the plane, and if it's safe then okay then do i need to keep my distance or do i need to uh let some you know we're a team on board too right we have other crewmates and like uh, okay i'll be the bad cop today if you want to be the good cop mm -hmm. or i could be the good cop and you be the bad cop or we just all just ignore the situation <laughs> it's it's kind of a collective conversation that we get to have in order to make sure that everybody's safe and that it doesn't escalate yeah so part of it is just knowing people and knowing what has happened in the past like if you sometimes leave a negative person on board when they're swearing at you it's only going to escalate later and you just don't want any kind of escalation at thirty-five thousand feet right so we're going to leave that escalation on the ground, let them calm down, have their little timeout session, and then, and then everybody's safe. And, you know, it's, it has happened where things escalate, and that's unfortunate. But most of the time, you can decide between all the crew members what we're going to do. And you have each other's back as well. Like, yeah. okay, you don't feel comfortable, I feel okay. But if you don't feel comfortable, then let's go with your gut reaction and let's trust that and then let's get them off the jet by the way i just want to do as a side note a thank you from every passenger who was on a flight where the the threat was taken off the person who was escalating was taken yeah. off <laughs> because that would be scary as hell to be a I mean, it's it's hard yeah. enough when you're sitting on a plane and it's grounded and there's you're feeling um, scared and threatened. Yeah. And so I just want to say thank you. <laughs> yeah. For uh, for keeping us all safe. Yeah, yeah. There before nine eleven, we had uh, Alaska Airlines had an incident where uh, a gentleman had a, a mental breakdown episode there was something actually wrong in his brain and he attacked the flight attendant and attempted to get in the flight deck wow. and so we learn about yearly uh, incidences like this and how to keep each other and the plane safe and yearly we go through this training and it's all safety related and but the skills really start with knowing people and being able to trust your intuition and being able to connect with people so that's another reason uh, like safety part i do connect with people i attempt to connect like how are you doing i want to get a read on how people are if you don't want to talk to me that's fine no problem but is it because 
you've had a bad day or something else Mm. because then my radar goes up and like, Hey, can you just touch base with that person? Somebody, you know, another crew member just to make sure it's not just me that I'm getting this vibe. Yeah. So then you can go from there and make a collective decision on, you know, heads up. Yeah. Just pay attention. Something's going on there. We don't know what it is, but something is off. I hadn't thought about that. I hadn't thought about, I mean, it's so multifaceted. It's, it's you, the, the way you're showing up to your work not only allows you to enjoy your work, not only helps every person on that flight enjoy the flight, but also allows your team to assess the, pa- the passengers and the safety of, of each other. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The more I connect, the more I know that the flight's going to be the best flight ever. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. It really is. It's delightful. People are always so surprised when I say that, but. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hmm, that's so interesting. Undercover coach. So sitting on the jump seat next to other crew members, you often it's often known that you open up your life to what's happening to your other crewmates. Like, how's it going? Oh, I'm getting a divorce or I'm remodeling my house or, you know, whatever is going on personally. Uh, we often call it jump seat therapy, but I end up actually just using my coaching skills, telling, you know, having a conversation with a fellow crewmate, I could tell do you want some help on that? I got some, I got some skills in my back pocket I could bring out. (laughs) So I sometimes end up doing that. Can you share what you, what are the tools that you use in, in, in coaching uh, undercover or not? What would you say are, when I was prepping for this, I was thinking about how I define coaching, how I define coaching tools, how I define what um, showing up as a coach means to me, what would be your, what would be your go-tos? Validation. Validation. (laughs) Validation. Acknowledging what's happening for that person, really hearing, having them be seen and heard, like, ah, that's got to be so rough right now. And being able to reflect that back to them. I think that in itself is sometimes all people need. Yeah. Just to be seen and heard. It's so hard to do in social media. Therefore, having it in person and just stopping for a second to be seen and heard and to be acknowledged and validated that whatever they're feeling is absolutely the right thing at the right time for them. That it's, this is the moment and every, you are exactly in the right spot you were supposed to be. You don't have all the answers. And that's okay. You don't need all the answers right now. You just need to really feel this moment. And then you can take that itsy bitsy teeny weeny step forward. So that's really what I'm doing. That's brilliant. That is brilliant. And not surprisingly, when I was thinking about season three and when you and I were talking Mm -hmm. on the flight, I um as i'm talking to you i'm like wow I, i'm not i'm just like bulldozing right past the validation and seeing and hearing <laughs> and not doing that to you so <laughs> it's all good it's all good it's all good you're so good at that you're so <laughs> good at that i mean that is exactly what i saw on the flight that is is a superpower for you and you're really really good at it <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And it's one of the things that 
kind of stuns me most, always takes me by surprise when I am coaching. When I slow down and spend the time validating and acknowledging, it just opens people up. I think it's what, like yeah. you said, it's what people want and don't have enough of. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll tell you about a situation that happened to me probably in the last three months. Please. Uh, I was something in my schedule canceled. I was going to be sitting in a passenger seat, but getting paid. I love that. <laughs> love that when that happens. And there was an irate passenger in the boarding area. And so the agents had told the flight attendants and working the flight, and I'm now a passenger. And they ended up sitting me next to this passenger. They were like, we'll let him board. And I go, well, I don't mind sitting next to this man. Just I'll give you the thumbs up or the thumbs down. Give me five minutes. So I'm in planes clothes. I'm not in uniform. I have nothing showing. So I really had my undercover coach hat on <laughs> and this man sits down. He's cool. So I was like, hey, how's it going, seatmate? And I just started a conversation. I knew what had happened previously, but he didn't know that I knew. And I just started a conversation. What's going on? Well, he's struggling in his life with his mom had passed away and he's got a house in these two locations and he's it, his story just he just started to tell his story and he's just really stressed about the stresses between dealing with um his mother passing and trying to show up in these different places in his life and so i just listened and i validated and i acknowledged where what he was feeling he calmed right down. He was totally quiet the whole flight. There was no problem whatsoever for the crew, for anybody else on that plane. He had been seen and heard enough to where he was like, yeah, I know I, he had mentioned like he was so stressed that he was I think the plane must have been late or something or some an earlier flight had canceled and so he was put out and and it 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 is stressful when that stuff happens. But with me just listening to him and validating what he was feeling, that calmed him right down to where he then was like, Yeah, I know I'll get there when I get there. And you know, all that stuff how we react instantly when we're out of control that calms down when we're seen and heard when we are actually listened to and reflected back to us what's really being heard because he would he would like look at me like who are you you really are listening to me that's crazy yeah. that's what people need yeah Yes. And as a former attorney turned late uh, life coach late in life, I, it's so hard for me not to just give people the answer or what I think is the answer or to, to try to solve. And I hear that all the time. People go rush right into problem solving before even recognizing whether there's a problem to solve. It often is just somebody just needs to air their thing and be seen and be heard. Yeah. Well, w one of the things in coaching, right? We know that everybody has their own answers. Yeah. They, they have the answer to the question that they're really asking themselves. They don't remember what that question is. <laughs> so by us asking questions, it reminds them the questions that, and the answers that they already have themselves. So it's not up to me to give them answers. It is up to me to remind them what the questions are 
so that they can be reminded that they already have the answer. It's already in them. They just need time and space and a safe space to come to their own conclusions. Yeah, that so, sum, sums up coaching right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the fun part, right? Is like seeing them, like the answers bubbling up, like, yeah. oh, yes. <laughs> I don't need to freak out. No, you know, I know we think we do sometimes and <laughs> Hey, there's, I mean, anger is a good emotion to you sometimes and it could be toxic as well. You know, our, our emotions we know are not good or bad. We just need to learn that we need to feel them in the moment and then release them to move on to the next emotion. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. I'm always struck by people who do that intuitively, who do that naturally, who who seem to have always done that. Uh, you know, my life was so touched by people who did that for me, who saw me and heard me. And it was having that example that I was able to say, it took me a long time to say, what if I could do that for somebody else? And then seeing how powerful that was. Yeah. When you're, when you're able to give that back to somebody, yeah. it is. Yes. And okay. So we have our thoughts, our emotions and our actions, right? And so it's, it's not only, it, it is a combination of all three, right? And being able to give another person a mirror, how they're being reflected so that they can, yeah, just be validated for who, who they're showing up to be. Yeah, I, I do have to remind myself to validate like actual clients when I've had them in the past, because I too start to get into the problem solving. Yeah. And that's, that's, yeah, that's a habit I have to work on. So I think like actually stepping away from monetarily coaching, right? You know, collecting funds and just being a coach, that undercover coach. Yes. And just validating people and acknowledging them and just keep doing that. That that is a gift. Yeah, yeah. maybe I'll charge five dollars. <laughs> okay, I'll take five dollars for that. Well, no. I love that you're saying that because um it, that's exactly right. That is a gift. It's a gift for yourself because you get that energy back of of mm -hmm. having given a space to somebody and 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 so that they can feel seen and heard. And that for me and you, you know, we talked about this energetically, like really yep. fulfilling. And it's a gift to the other people. And it's a great example for, uh, you know, then they, as, as I did when I was younger, see that, have that experience and then go do that for somebody else. And it brings me to something that I was going to say earlier about um, one of the things that I'm exploring in season three is these mini coaching sessions, 20 minute laser coaching sessions that are free of charge. And it's amazing to me, Renee, how, you know, I can't, I, it's not my normal you know, even a, a regular coaching session is usually an hour for me, but I, you know, I work with somebody for four months at a time. So it's yep. 20 minutes is a tiny amount of time. And what has been really extraordinary for me, just giving somebody 20 minutes where, as you, as you were so eloquently saying, they're in a safe space and they are able to hear themselves and feel seen is almost all that needs to happen in that 20 yes. minutes. It's yes. unbelievable how powerful that is for the person just to be given that time, given that space, given that acknowledgement, given that validation. It's unbelievable what happens so fast, so fast. Yeah. I mean, I've had it sitting on the jump seat with a fellow flight attendant, we get into a conversation, it's 15 minutes long. And she says back to me, 
you know, tears rolling down her eyes saying, I've gotten more out of this 15 minute conversation with you than I have out of 10 years of counseling. Yes. Not to, not to knock counseling, but just saying like, I just moved forward so far in that 15 minutes than I have been trying to do, trying to fix myself for the last 10 years through counseling. And it's like, and of course I don't have that agenda. It's just, it, it, it ends up happening. And it's so awesome what yeah. it does. Like, Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, I don't even know what I did. I, I know. just asked me some <laughs> questions, girl, but awesome. That's great. It is. I it's, know. It is. It's life-changing. It's like you get an insight, you get that aha moment and you're like, oh, and that just opens the door for them. And then they're able to run with it. And that's the beauty of coaching. It's like, you don't have to work with me for a long period of time in order to get a lot out of the the coaching. The whole purpose of coaching is to give you the skills right. so that you can run away. Right. Yes. Fly on your own. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I want to hear some more stories. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. What do we want to talk about? Well, of course, I want to ask you, what's the strangest thing you've ever experienced as a flight attendant? <laughs> I don't know if I could tell that one. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, some people like to bring out their bodily parts. And oh, come on. Like there's some, there's some people on the planes that decide to become cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and... Uh, <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> and decide to display their bodily parts. That's special. What? Oh, wow. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> what about, do you how... do? <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, Lordy. Uh, you, uh, hopefully you see that while boarding so that you could esc- <laughs> escort them off the aircraft. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Because that does not need to be happening. No. Um, yeah. Oh, good Lord. That's yeah. terrifying. So, so uh, that's <laughs> that's good times right there. Are people really <laughs> having sex in the bathrooms? I cannot think of any place worse. It happens. Oh. I don't know why. Okay, listen. Pee, poop, and puke. I know. Why? Why do you want to? And fluorescent do, lighting. Let's not and, forget that. <laughs> and fluorescent lighting in a very small cramped space. Yes. And I just don't want to. I, I don't understand it. But of course, I've caught a few. And that's, um, I think one, <laughs> there were like nine people on the plane this one time. Oh. And we're sitting in the back. It's not like we don't notice. <laughs> Who's going into which lavatory? But I'm sorry, with the three Ps, really? Oh, good Lord. I, yes, it's so gross. It's. <laughs> <laughs> but I know it's on some people's list, so hey. Oh, good Lord. Just yeah. make sure you clean it up. Okay. <laughs> you can no, clean you. beforehand, clean afterhand. It's a lot please. of cleaning. Please, please. <laughs> La 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 la. What do you wish people knew uh, about flying that would make your life a lot easier or your job a lot better? That we have had a long day. That not only are we delayed, you know, your your flight is late, got canceled, so did ours. So we're in it with you. We're there with you to go through whatever is happening. Like the long taxis are starting to come back into JFK and, and San Francisco. And so all, all the weather stuff that's happening and the diverted flights, we're all in this together. I, and I can help you with as much as I can, but I don't have all the answers. Yeah, but I can do my best to get you to the people who do. And 
So what do I wish people really knew? Yeah, them throwing a tantrum isn't really going to get them anything. And if you're really nice to the flight attendants, it really pays off. (laughs) And parents with kids, it's great if you parent your kids (laughs) instead of us. Right. Other stories on the airplane, I think it's it's fun to have birthdays and anniversaries and just you know, have a celebration with passengers. Oh, that's, that's always nice. fun. And I know a lot of flight attendants dread working like a Mexico or even a Vegas flight where everybody's like, <laughs> yeah, we're going to party. Um, I kind of have fun with those flights. Like, you know, Hey, I'm here to help, you know, be a part of your, lovely vacation that you're about to begin, but let's keep it um, within a controlled zone. <laughs> try to try to keep the voices inside voices. <laughs> and then we can have everybody enjoy the play yeah. in their way. But yeah, it, it can be a lot of fun too. What's your favorite? Um, what's your favorite place to go? Juneau, Alaska is probably one of my most favorite because there's great restaurants and breweries and great hiking right outside our hotel and the view and the scenery and the people are phenomenal. I love it up there. So that's probably one of my favorites. I'm not going to complain about Maui, any any (laughs) island in Hawaii. And I like exploring uh, the East Coast and and like I go to JFK, I've been seeing a lot of Broadway shows lately. Oh, That's great. super fun. Yeah. And my sister just moved to Boston and I go see relatives and girlfriends in different states, That's Nashville awesome. and Boise and Phoenix and San Diego. So I, I kind of like going everywhere and having a variety just so that it keeps it fresh for me. Can you tell me just, I'm just curious, what's the biggest difference between, you've been in this industry for a long time. What are the changes that you've seen from when you started till now? Well, good old Bin Laden, he changed a lot for us uh, security wise. Um, We used to have that flight deck door open a lot more. There would be a lot more personal relationships being built with the flight crew and the Mm. flight attendants. And between the pilots and the flight attendants. And since that door has been shut, that uh, relationship has been more difficult to establish. And so we, we still obviously have conversations, but just, just from when I started flying to now, it's changed a lot in that it, even when I started to people before me, their schedules used to all fly together. So five, six crew members were together for like a whole month. So you really get to know people that way because you're, you know, flying together and then you're laying over together in different cities across the nation. You all have your routines, but you actually get to know somebody, you know, get to know their families and, and their story and what's important to them. And, so that's harder to do now because you don't get to spend, the, our schedules are now very different and we can change a pilot crew every single flight. So mm-hmm. it's a lot different these days. So it's a bigger challenge to have a deeper connections because mm-hmm. the time frame to have that deeper connection is now shortened. Yeah. And so it's really just almost transactional that's basically how the industry has changed a lot just within the industry and all airlines have uh, gone through that change in the last 25 30 years other changes i mean lately it's been everybody is short staffed yeah uh, i think the world is short staffed right yeah. now I, I mean i know it's not just airlines it's it's everybody and everybody's really struggling I think I'll show also in how to make connections. Social yeah. media has um, been a wall to try to climb through to finding 
actual connections with people and getting to know people because texting is so easy and social media memes and different apps on social media, it just makes it more difficult to make actual connections. For me, I like that challenge <laughs> <laughs> because of who I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, I, it, it doesn't surprise me that, uh, first of all, that, that word transactional is coming up a lot. I'm hearing that a lot with people that the relationships that more and more people are feeling like the relationships they're having are transactional. And as somebody who really loves connection, you, I, I love that you see that as a challenge, uh, to, to be met. Um, and it, doesn't surprise me that your ability to acknowledge and validate, genuinely acknowledge and validate and hold that space for somebody else is really well received and much needed. The other thing that really strikes me about what you're saying, Renee, that was so obvious on that flight is you are a genuinely curious person. And so what I'm taking from this conversation is acknowledgement and validation are two of the biggest gifts you can give another person and yourself. Yes. And curiosity, what is happening here? What's happening here for me? What's happening here for this person? And being genuinely curious uh, in your in your energy in the way you are showing up to somebody else. I mean, that that posture is um, is what helps somebody is what creates that safe space. Uh, it's also, it sounds like what allows you to be able to walk away from somebody who is not ready to receive it and not take it personally. What's happening here for me? I'm taking this personally. It hurts, but I'm recognizing this is not about me and I'm going to let it go. Yeah. Yeah. It is a challenge to, uh, to let it go at, at, and I can go through the mental exercise of thinking, oh, that, you know, like this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> and okay, remember, this is them. Okay, I'm not gonna take it personally. Okay, I'm just gonna walk away and just, you know, connect with a passenger, connect with somebody else, uh, have a different connection. I'm still gonna be me and okay, they're not ready. This is, yeah, being gracious to know that, uh, to give them space, mm. to just drop it and walk away. And yes, be gracious. And I think you said it perfectly. So uh, I'll just leave it what you said. <laughs> That's good. I like it. Well, Thank you for that validation. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm getting better at it. <laughs> Is there anything that you wish I had asked you or that you wanted to, um, you were hoping to talk about? I think just the main thing to know about me is that I am open to hear everybody's story. Everybody has a story. Everybody has their journey and I'm open to hear it and reflect it back to them so that they can grow just a little bit and through my acknowledging and validating and and also walking away mm -hmm. and letting go i'm here to reflect back for people what they need i think that's what i want to say beautiful that's beautiful Thank you so much, Renee. It is such a pleasure. I look for you every time I get on a plane. I always <laughs> hope I get to see you, but if not in the sky, for sure, let's connect in real life, in person. Absolutely. I can't wait. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for listening to this episode of Season 3, Undercover Coaches. This season was born from the idea that you don't have to be a coach or trained in coaching skills to move the needle. 
people in my audience were saying, your guests are amazing, but I don't have these coaching or leadership skills. I can't do that work because I don't know how to. What if I get it wrong or make a mistake? I feel exactly the same way every goddamn day. And I'm calling bullshit on both of us. Creating a connection, stepping into possibility can be as simple as a conversation or even a smaller step, listening before responding. What's one thing you heard in this conversation that you can put into practice? Start with someone you know if that's easier, and then once you get comfortable, try it on someone you don't. Keep practicing. That's the work. I'll be right here beside you doing the same thing. After all, we're living through this together. 